Welcome. In this video I'd like to give you the answers to the two surprising Fibonacci puzzles I presented in a previous video. So please watch that previous video. This one's not going to make any sense to you if you haven't seen what the puzzles actually are. So here I'd like to talk about the two puzzles, a Bieber, the language of a Bieber, and the partition puzzle. And we found that they seem to be the, each be the alternating Fibonacci numbers, one being the even ones, one being the odd ones. So why? What's going on there? Well, the answer actually comes from a simple diagram, this honeycomb diagram I'm showing on the screen right now. This appears in many books on Fibonacci numbers. There's actually a very simple way to generate them. And this itself is its own little puzzle. Suppose I start at the left cell and ask, how many ways can I go to, say, some cell further to the right? Now, these rows can be as any, as any length I like, as long as there's two rows. OK, here goes. To build our way to the rightmost cell, let's ask easier questions. How many ways can I get to the cell, say, one directly both below the start? Now, the motions that's allowed in this game, I can, or must always move some degree to the right. That is, I can take a step down to the right, I can take a step up to the right, or I can stay, take a step horizontally to the right, but I can't take any steps that sort of go to the leftish direction. Well, in which case, there's only one way to get to that cell. Take a sort of a downward, rightish step. One way to get here. Uh, now I can ask how many ways can I get to this cell from start just above that one. Well, I could either go directly to the right, or I could go down then up. So there's actually two ways to get to that cell. Uh, to get to the next cell, I can see, the one, next one on the bottom row, I've got a couple of ways to get there. Either get myself to the cell directly to the left, there's one way, and then take a step directly to the right, or get myself self to the cell directly above it and take a step down. And in fact, there's two ways to get to the cell above it, so that gives me two options to go from the top cell down to this one. That's a total of three ways to get to this cell. Uh, moving along, any ways to get to the next cell on the top row? Well, two options. Get to the previous cell directly to the left, and since there's two ways to get there, that gives me two ways to then step directly to the right into the cell I'm interested in. Or get myself to the cell to blow it, and since there's three ways to get there, that gives me three options to then take a step directly up. So now I see the way to get to this cell on the this next cell on the top row is basically the sum of the two previous answers. Two plus three is five. And we can see what's going on. It really is the Fibonacci numbers being generated this way. To get to this cell, either get from the left, three ways there, and take a step to the right. Get yourself to the top, five ways to get there, and then take a step down. There's to be a total of eight options to get into this cell. 13 to this, 21, 34, 55, and then to answer my original puzzle, there are 89 ways, therefore, to get from the beginning to the end. All right, uh, just to make the appearance of the Fibonacci numbers absolutely clear, let's just declare that the beginning cell, there's one way to be standing in it. So we see that Fibonacci numbers 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. Now, what's interesting? It seems that this top row numbers is what we were getting from the partition number puzzle, and the bottom row numbers were what we are getting from the language of a Bieber. So what I'd like to do now is see if we can figure out how to interpret paths as answers to either partitions or answers to language of a Bieber. If we can have a direct correspondence between these, tips, these paths and these two particular puzzles, that explains why, indeed, the partition numbers are the top row of this diagram, every second Fibonacci number, and the language numbers are, are the other Fibonacci numbers on the bottom row. All right, here goes. Let's start with the partition. Let's, let's suppose we're starting on the top row, and we're going to end again on the top row. And there's some path, maybe it's something like this, where it goes down, up, maybe down, couple, over a couple of places, up, and then over. I claim there's one of the, there's one of the 89 ways to go from beginning to that rightmost cell. And I'm going to interpret that as a partition using two different types of one. Basically, what's happening here, I'm only going to sort of focus on the top cell. I can take one step over, but to get one step over, I've already sort of done a, a downwards type one, which I'll denote as one with a little down on it. Or maybe I can take one step over to staying on the top row. I'll call that an upwards type one. And then mysterious things happen where I just seem to skip over a whole bunch of cells in the top row by taking a little dive down underground. And that's really corresponds to one, two, three. So this path, this red path with a downwards one, a little tunnel underneath, and an upwards one, corresponds to the partition of the number five, which I would write as one plus three, whoops, wrong one, one plus three plus one. That was bad of me to put a little one up there. Okay, that's one of the 89 paths that goes from, from the start to this rightmost cell, and it corresponds to position 5. Backwards, uh, if I give you a position of the number 5 first, so as I said, let's do something like 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, does that really correspond to a path? Well, yes. 
Start at two. Start, 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 start at the start. I need to go underground two places. That's it. That's an underground of two. Then I need to do an underground of one. Okay, an underground of one. There it is. Then I need to do another underground of one. Okay, another underground of one. And then I need to do an overground of one. Whoops, just directly across. One. So there it is. All the partitions using two different types of one really do correspond to paths that end on the top row of this honeycomb diagram. Therefore, the number of partitions of n ordered using two different types of one really is every second Fibonacci number. Depends on what coefficients you want to set things up. So I'll just say even ones, but if you want to be very precise with subscripts, you need to just figure that out in little detail. All right, next, how can I interpret paths that uh, end on a bottom row as words in the language of a Bieber? All right, let's uh, clean up my space here. Ta -da -ta -da -da -da. A uh, little boring to watch, apologize for that. I should learn how to edit videos and make them more snazzy one day. All right, here goes. Uh, let's, let's put the Fibonacci numbers back in here. 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, and so on. Uh, 50, am I, so 34, I'm saying 34, 55, 89. There we go. All right, I claim 1's on the bottom row, powers on the bottom row corresponds to words in the language of a Bieber. All right, uh, whew, this is gonna be tricky, here goes. All right, suppose I start here and I do a path that does something like this. I'm going to read this path literally as it is. I've got a downward movement, which I'll call D, followed by an upward movement, which I'll call U for up, and I've got a vertical well, I don't know what I call it, a, one, a, a, a horizontal move on the upper level. I'll call that a high horizontal. I don't have one in this, this particular, but if I had a one step over on the lower level, I'll call that a lower horizontal. So I can in, at least interpret a path as a sequence of these four symbols. So this particular path, one of the eight ways to get from the start to the cell here, is written as down, up, a horizontal on the upper level, and a down. In fact, uh, if I go through, I can do another path. Da, 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 da. Maybe I'll do horizontal on the upper level, horizontal upper level, and down on the horizontal. Down. Oops. So that would be horizontal, horizontal, down. And maybe I'll just do a third one. Uh, down, up, down, up, down. Oops. All right. That doesn't look anything like a Bieber right now. Now remember a Bieber had three letters, A, B, and E, and the rule was you could never have an E following an A. In what I've got here in this interpretation of paths, I seem to have four letters. So here's my trick. In this game, let's now ignore all the Ds. Goodbye Ds. So at least now I've got a puzzle of three letters. Now, have I lost information? If I give you just three letters, could I reconstruct the path? Knowing there's meant to be Ds in there, I just don't know where they are. Well, yes. Look at this UH. If someone said to me, I went UH and I'm missing some Ds, that means I started going an up. How could I possibly start with an up? I must have gone with a down first, because an up's got to come from going up yonder. Whoops, let's get a really good pen. So there's got to be a first and up in yellow like this. Then I have a horizontal. Well, the only horizontal I can do on the upper level will be here. So that's the only two paths I've been given, and I can actually fill in the rest of it. I know it must have been a down, and it must have been a down. So I can interpret where the two Ds were in that one. If someone gives me an H and an H, can I reconstruct where the Ds were? Well, the answer is yes. Uh, now this is getting very messy, I'm sorry. Um, I can do a horizontal, that's fine, no problem there. I can do another horizontal, that's fine, and that's basically all I've been given. But I know I'm ending up on this eight cell that must have been followed by a D, there must have been a D at the very end. And finally, with a u up and an up, well, I've got an up. Let's, let's get, make this a real mess. There's an up. Can only, the first up can only be there. The next up that is available to me can only be there. And I've got no choice in order to fill this in as a path with these ups is to put a down at the beginning, a down in the middle, and a down at the end. So knowing I'm ending on cell number eight, I can actually take each of these guys and reconstruct where the Ds are. So this paths then really come to let sequences of letters using U, H, and a lower L. 
And uh, also, I probably should do an LL example. Suppose someone gave me LL, can I interpret where the Ds are? Well, yes. There must be a lower L. There must be another lower L. And the only place I can get a D must be at the beginning. So this must be DLL. So again, I've got combinations of two letters, U, H, and L. And are there any restrictions? Can I have up, up? Totally. Can I have up H? Totally. Can I have up L? Uh, actually, yes. Up and then L. I know what to do. I'm sorry, this is becoming very messy. I can do an up and I can do an L. I know how to fix in the Ds for that. Are there any restrictions? Well, I think the only restriction is I can't do an L followed by an H. Because if I had an L, actually, now I need to really, this is unfair. Let's clear the space, see if I make it reappear. If someone said to me, L, H, is that actually valid in this game? Well, that means I have a lower horizontal followed by an upper horizontal and nothing in between. But I would be forced, in order to make this make sense, to put an up between those, which I would have allowed to, which I, would, which I would have mentioned, I would have mentioned to you. So in this game, no LHs ever appear. So basically now, I've just learned that each path from the start to this cell on the bottom corresponds to a language of U, H, and L, in which there are no L, H combinations. H, L is fine. Here's an H. Oops, sorry. Here's an H. Here's an L. That's fine. Because I've, would, I know there would have been a D in there. Uh, but no other combination. All other combinations are actually fine. It's just L, H. So actually, paths that end on the bottom row correspond to languages with three letters, U, H, L, in which L, H never occurs. That is, it's the language of a Bieber, just different alphabet. So there we have it. The language of a Bieber is the bottom rows of this honeycomb design, and the partition numbers, the two different types of one, is the top row of this honeycomb design. Now, of course, this leads to interesting puzzles. What numbers appear in three uh, rows of three honeycombs? And can they be interpreted as languages and partitions? Or just take the partition puzzle. What if I had three different types of one? How many ordered partitions are there numbers of three different types of one? Or two different types of one and two different types of two? Suddenly, this become a research puzzle with quite some deep complications. Go have fun with it. Thank you.